Hello and welcome back to Business Matters at the Hindu with me, K. Bharat Kumar. In recent weeks, the use of the word millets has gone up around me. At least I'm beginning to notice it. We've had millet dosas at home more often than earlier. I noticed a restaurant with millet specific menus. So I'm somebody coming from South India who enjoys white polished rice as staple. But why the sudden zest for millets? Let's find out. Before we dive deep in, I want to point out that some of the data that you will see in this video presentation came from an explainer on millets that a colleague had done for our internet edition that you will see here. This year, 2023 has been declared as the International Year of the Millet by the United Nations following a proposal by India. India, by the way, wants to position itself as a global hub for millets. Interestingly, millets can help the world confront some of the challenges facing it right now. The two most important being Millets are not only climate friendly, but they can also help raise nutrition levels across the world. Here's what the Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN says on the International Year of the Millet. As the global agri-food systems face challenges to feed an ever-growing global population, resilient cereals like millets provide an affordable and nutritious option, and efforts need to be scaled up to promote their cultivation. Millets can play an important role and contribute to our collective efforts to empower smallholder farmers, achieve sustainable development, eliminate hunger, adapt to climate change, promote biodiversity, and transform agri-food systems, FAO Director General Kyu Dong Yu said. In a separate State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World 2022 report, the FAO said, with eight years remaining to end hunger, food insecurity, and all forms of malnutrition, the world is progressing in the wrong direction. The sharp increase in global consumer food prices has spurred the average cost of a healthy diet at the global level to $3.54 per person per day in 2020, the latest available data shows. This is an increase of 3.3% and 6.7% compared with 2019 and 2017 respectively. Between 2019 and 2020, Asia witnessed the highest surge in the cost of a healthy diet at 4%. As a result, almost 3.1 billion people could not afford a healthy diet in 2020. This was an increase of 112 million more people than in 2019. This was mainly driven by Asia, where 78 million more people were unable to afford such a diet. Interestingly, the FAO also points out that market price controls, example minimum or administered prices, mostly target staple foods like wheat, maize, rice, and sugar. It grants that while their key objective is to stabilize or raise farm income and ensure enough supplies of staple foods, the governments may also implicitly discourage the production of other foods that are necessary for healthy diets. Why are millets referred to as being healthy for you? Millets belong to the cereal family like rice or wheat but used to be called coarse grains, an obvious reference to the rough external structure. All cereals are rich sources of carbohydrates, but millets also come with more protein, dietary fiber, iron and calcium content. A paper published in the Ethnic Foods Journal under the Springer Nature umbrella claims that before the Green Revolution, production of rice and millets were higher than the production of wheat, barley and maize all combined together. But since then, the production of millets has gone down and the crops that were once consumed in every household became a fodder crop in just a few decades after the Green Revolution. According to a presentation by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare, in the 1965-70 to 70 time frame, millets formed 20% of our food grain basket but are now down to 6%. Let's also take a look at the percentage of cropped area for wheat versus jowar, for example. Jowar went from close to 12% to 3.1% in about 65 years and wheat zoomed from 7.6% to 16.2%. In a 2018 notification, the government had indicated that millets are a powerhouse of nutrients and said that recent research had indicated that millets can be a good defense in the fight against diabetes. Millets are low glycemic index foods, which means such foods figure lower down on the glycemic index, which means they have lesser impact on blood glucose levels than foods that are higher up in the index. 
To help consumers understand the benefits of millets, the government in the same 2018 notification had changed the nomenclature from coarse grains to nutri cereals referring to millets. Why are millets referred to as being climate friendly? An article at orfonline.com says that millets require 70% less water than paddy to grow. They grow at about half the time as a wheat crop and need about 40% less energy in processing. Millets are also hardy crop that can withstand extreme heat conditions. Millets are said to be among the earliest cereals, if not the first, to have been cultivated by mankind. In the years following our independence, India was faced with such a huge food shortage that it had to get its act together quickly. The Green Revolution prioritized the cultivation of wheat and rice, high yielding varieties, both of them, that helped avert such crisis in the following decades. Despite such a drop in acreage, India, given its large landmass, still produces a significant quantum of millets, 170 lakh tons per year. This accounts for 80% of Asia's output and about 20% of global production. India's ambitious target articulated in 2018 is to exceed 450 lakh tons per year by 2030. From a business point of view, what does the export opportunity look like? According to data from APIDA or the Agricultural and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority, India exported about 480 crore or $64 million worth of millets for the year ended March 2022. FAO data shows that for 2021, the global export market was worth about $4.4 billion, of which about 50% is controlled by the US. Significantly, this market had doubled in a very short period, 2017 to 2021, almost doubled to $4.4 billion. And interestingly, the US not only corners half of the market, but also cornered half of the increase that we saw between 2017 and 2021. If business is ripe for the taking, can startups be far behind in today's world? As part of its mission, the government has invested in about 66 millet-focused startups with a cumulative investment exceeding about 6 crore. Millet advisor Tapas Chandra Roy on his website says there exist several fertile areas for startups to create their offerings around in the millet business. For example, the millet primary processing unit. Dehusking of some millets is important before they can be consumed and hence this processing unit opportunity. And then there are others like millet aggregators, millet seed entrepreneurs, millet packaging and millets for specific industries such as baking or the hotel industry. Millet focused pharma producer organizations, e-commerce online platform for millet products are other such opportunities. Of course, he also advises that entrepreneurs need to review demand for their offerings before they start out on such a journey. As an aside, as I was doing up the script for this video, a family found a restaurant in Chennai specifically focused on millets. Here are a couple of photos. So things do seem to be picking up around the world of millets. But quick progress in the millets arena would not be possible without the government's intervention, both in terms of helping create the demand as well as in incentivizing production. If more than 50 years ago, technological innovation and policy can help create a surge in the production and consumption of rice and wheat, the reverse process for millets is not impossible if that's what the country wants. Here are the seven areas of effort by which the government hopes to achieve its millet mission goals. Of these, policy intervention and awareness creation are key. Why? Because even though the minimum support price or MSP for millets such as Ragi, Bajra and Jowar had been raised by 80 to 125% between FY14 and FY22, according to an article in our sister publication Business Line, the combined production of these millets has dropped by 7% in that period. Demand creation is also key because individually, for example, if I just love having rice and my awareness about millets and their health benefits is low, I wouldn't switch very easily. Even a marginal price difference won't make me switch. And why do I talk about price? Because as per the National Food Security Act, the public distribution system or the PDS actually offers coarse grains at rates much cheaper than rice or wheat. A look at the stock numbers put out by the Food Corporation of India for the year, monthly between January and December of 2022, tells you a story about both production and demand. If you look at the monthly averages, rice and wheat run into large triple digits in terms of lakh tons, while coarse grains are in low single digits. The government's stated intention to help spur demand will also help. 
For example, it says it aims to mandate at least one millet-based meal per week in schools and anganwadis and that hotels should have at least one millet dish on their menus and so on. And while we are on the topic of food, I wanted to share a tweet with you that I saw this morning. The world eats so much junk food that eating regular food is seen as dieting. So here's to a healthy food plan for all of us for the rest of this year. Till we meet again, it's goodbye from us.